first and foremost, we want to ensure that our customers are the most successful running MariaDB software on any platform of their choice. A little bit of trivia, similar to you know, the Gaming Innovation Group, 24% of our customer, of our subscribing customers, are running their deployments on some sort of cloud footprint. You know, pretty amazing. You know, we've, these customers could be running on you know, things like Amazon, Azure, Alibaba, uh, Rackspace, you know, the, the list goes on. There's, there's a lot of different cloud providers out there. And MariaDB, we've been working with customers you know, for several, several years in a variety of different ways, both on-premise and in the cloud. And we've learned a lot. We've learned, learned a lot around performance characteristics, you know, run times, um, you know, things not to do, things to how to performance tune, uh, and it's been a great journey. And we're excited we're able to share that, uh, those learnings and those best practices through our managed service offering. Uh, most recently, we've been doing some benchmarking, you know, comparing different types of workloads. Uh, and so for the next you know, couple of slides, we're gonna walk through some, some scenarios comparing MariaDB's managed service um, running on EC2 with Amazon's um, managed service on RDS, and we're gonna compare and contrast some, some capabilities there. All right, so to kind of help set up this, the story, um, we selected HammerDB as a way to do some benchmarking. It's an industry-recognized uh, benchmarking tool. Um, in the upper right are some of the input parameters. If you'd like to go run some of these tests, you absolutely can. Uh, we're using the TPC uh, C uh, part of the test, um, 800 warehouses, so we wanted to make sure we had enough scale. It's roughly over you know, 200 gigs that's behind the scenes in some of this testing. Uh, with two minute ramp, a five minute duration. Uh, and then as a part of HammerDB, you know, there's lots of different metrics you can get, but some of the things we're, we're gonna cover today are our transactions per minute, so, and, then, and then also the number of virtual users uh, that are being applied to the load. And as you would expect, as you increase the number of virtual users, you would expect the number of transactions per minute to increase up until a point that particular type of hardware becomes saturated uh, and levels off and then eventually kind of rolls off. So we're gonna be, try to keep things consistent across uh, each of the tests so we can kind of, so it's, so it's kind of apples to apples the best you can. Uh, we're gonna be sticking with the, the Amazon R5 family of, of instance types. Uh, we'll be starting out with the, the X-Large, which is a four core, uh, I'm sorry, four vCPU is the term, and 32 gigabytes of memory. So here we go. So this is running on Amazon's managed service, RDS. Uh, and to kind of help set up the stage, we have an application that we've anticipated is going to need around 100,000 uh, TPM uh, with, with around 40 concurrent users. So we'll take a look at this first benchmark and really just to try to help establish a starting point of where we'd, we'd want to deploy into and what instance size, et cetera. So we can see in using the X large uh, on RDS, uh, we can see very quickly that you know, we get about, it peaks off at around 80,000 uh, TPM, which doesn't meet our, our, our anticipated requirements for this given application. And then also you can see it rolls off very quickly. So that's, again, not good news. So we're about to do what Amazon would love us to do, right? And that's throw more iron at the problem. So what we're gonna do is we're, at, we're actually such a, a gap between what we need and what's, where it's at. We're actually gonna jump a couple different instance sizes. We're gonna jump from the X large to the four X large. So we're actually going from a four core 32 up to a 16 core 128 uh, gigs of memory. So by doing that, um, you can see that we did get a, a little bit higher throughput there. Uh, it actually peaked out at around 115,000 TPMs but um, it quickly rolled off. So again, back to kind of our anticipated application requirements, we needed 40, you know, 40 active users with 100,000, we're nowhere close. It's actually down there around 60,000 in this example. So we could continue to you know, add more iron to it. We could go to a 8X large, we could go to a 16X large, but every time we do that, uh, we're, we're increasing complexity and more importantly, we're increasing the cost dramatically. Um, so I think everyone who's used Amazon knows as you go up, the instance cut prices you know, go, go up um, commensurately with that. So rather than keep on throwing more iron at it, what we want to do is take a different approach. Let's take a look at MariaDB uh, running on MariaDB's um, managed service on EC2. So same instance sizes. We're actually going to start out with the, uh, the, R, the, the R5 X-Large, so the smaller instance type. And let's take a look. So we have the purple line here. Uh, the purple line, a couple things you, you can notice out of this. Right, of the, right out of the gate, you notice that it's actually ramping up faster. So we're getting a faster ramp up time 
with MariaDB on EC2. And we're, we're getting a higher peak rate, and then we're holding on to the concurrency uh, as it progresses. So substantially you know, better performance at, at, the, at the lower cost of the, the instance sizes. And we're also running on, on EC2, which is going to be a lower cost with, with the MariaDB managed service. So the next thing that comes to mind typically is, well, it's using the, they're both using the, you know, the, R, the, the, the X large R5 instances. Why could there be such different performance? And there's a few reasons for that. You know, one of them is, you know, we're using the latest and greatest MariaDB software. So it's, we have the latest performance fixes, bug fixes, et cetera. So that's, that could be one of the reasons. Um, you know, we, we have the ability to tune both the infrastructure, the operating system, uh, and the Maria, MariaDB software. So we, we apply all of our best practices uh, to, to implement inside of there. And then um, another one is, you know, Maria, we found that, that, that um, Amazon's managed service was not highly tuned for, for MariaDB. You know, we were able to do some testing and get some slight improvements as a part of what, um, what RDS could offer, but nowhere close to what uh, MariaDB on MariaDB's managed service offering can provide. Cool. So the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, there's been a lot of um, discussion from the Amazon side around Aurora. So it's kind of funny if you've ever tried to provision a database on on RDS, you know, the first question that pops up there, which database do you want to use? And the first one is Aurora. You know, then you've got, you know, MySQL and you have, you know, MariaDB. And so you pick MariaDB, right? Click next. And then the next question is, is what, you know, what, what type of workload do you want? And the first option is production. And then it does dash Aurora. <laughs> it's like, well, I just selected MariaDB. So the next option underneath there is, is MariaDB. So you, so you can select that. Um, but, but needless to say, Aurora has been getting a lot of attention from, from, from Amazon. Um, so we wanted to do some comparisons against our managed service uh, in, in contrast with, the, with the, Am, the, the Aurora offering. So if you add in here in, the, in this given chart, we can see here that, that Aurora is in the red, and we still have in the faint, uh, the faded out uh, um, um, RDS uh, instances. You can see that the, the actual throughput uh, continued to, to improve. So it got better with Aurora, uh, but the actual uh, performance versus MariaDB on EC2 is still nowhere close. So very excited to say we, we ramp faster still and we're able to hold a longer, you know, a higher, a higher TPM across this. 